you know, and, and the majority of the students in the classroom may be African Americans, mm -hmm. but for some reason they do not want to look at infusing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, if I infuse it, you might get excited about learning. Right. Mm -hmm. If you get excited about learning, mm -hmm. you might start graduating again. Mm -hmm. If you start graduating again, now you're impacting the prison systems and uh -huh. all the other stuff that we put into place yeah. now based on you uh, failing correct. academically. That's correct. So we have to stop expecting other people to do this right. for us. Right. Yes, well, that's true. You, you, you brought up a good point. We have uh, partnered with the, uh, the Health and Hospital Corporation. They have a program called, called Reclaiming the Village, mm -hmm. where they have about maybe 18 after-school programs, okay. where they're using uh, the, uh, the curriculum as part of their foundation to start mm -hmm. with. There, there was a study done because they always ask us, where's the data? What, mm -hmm. Does this work? Right, exactly. Uh, there was a study done in Chicago uh, by the uh, Northwestern University and Loyola University. Uh, they looked at the effects of changes in racial identity and self-esteem on changes in African-American adolescents' mental health. And what they did, to summarize it, they took 259 African-American adolescents transitioning from the 7th to the 8th grade. They were ages 12 to 14. Half of them they gave racial identity uh, heritage to. The other half they didn't. The half that, that, did, that they gave the information to, uh, not only did they academically, did their uh, achievement level rise, they looked at, there were five areas. Um, I know the first two areas that made a change. One change was they were able to deal with their peers better because mm -hmm. they knew who they mm -hmm. were. Okay, when they said, "Oh, you just want to make a hey, yeah," because I'm I'm going somewhere. Right. right. Okay. Two, they could deal with racial discrimination in the classroom better. When a teacher would try to shut them down or lock them down, they knew who they were. They knew where they were going. They could better manage okay. their, their attitudes and behavior. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. From this. And so, and also the summary was that just talking about, they, they found out just talking about uh, racism, uh, just talking about racism and what's going on today as far as uh, cultural racism is not going to do it for the child. They need to know deeply within, mm -hmm. you know, who they are, you know, where they come from. Uh, one of the things that we try to teach with young people, and when we, especially the, the, the middle of the high school, is the intelligence that happens when you are sperm. Okay? okay. Biology lesson. Mm -hmm. The intelligence that you and I, they say in order for us to make it here on this earth, uh, you can win the lottery. Because there's hundreds and thousands of others trying to get to the same place we're trying to get to. But there was an intelligence that we had to maneuver, mm -hmm. you know, when, when the fluid was released, destroying everything, mm -hmm. you know, within the womb. Mm -hmm. So there was an intelligence in the story that says the Creator has ordained struggle from the very beginning because we had to swim upstream to right. connect. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a story in that because there's the, the only other creature that does that is the salmon, has to swim upstream. You know, the bears are getting them, but they have to swim upstream uh, to create. But the thing about that particular story we tell young people is that that story starts all over again once you come out into the world mm -hmm. that you're going to go against and have struggle. Yes, yeah. Okay, but there is DNA within you automatically. We call it divine natural activity, mm. okay, okay, that you already have when you come here. So when someone's trying to lock your mind down, you got to understand where you come from. On the pyramid text, it tells like this that. story like about that. the sperm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, because our ancestors knew. It's very interesting because uh, in some of the hieroglyphics, they have already chiseled out six inches deep a sperm. Mm -hmm. So they already had an understanding from so the they beginning. Said, well, how, yeah. did you, how did you see the sperm when you... Don't have a microscope. Uh -huh. Okay. So the same thing is how do or how did you chart the universe without a microscope when we look at the Dogon people? Okay. Who, who when the, when the uh, 
British came over and discovered them, they said, oh, these are primitive people. But yet, when they went into their caves, they seen Sirius A and B already charted. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they told them that this was the end of a 26,000 year period. Okay. And they have 12 chairs in this cave. And you go look this up. They have 12 chairs in this cave. And they said, we're on the 29th, uh, let's say 26,000 year, 29,000 period coming to that end. And they were amazed. But they were really amazed when they said, we have nine other rooms with 12 chairs in it. Mm. Okay. So we have been here on this earth, but we are not aware of it. Okay. They demonize our heroes and our sheroes. Right, right. They repackage it. You know, we asked young people who was Imhotep, and they said, yeah, we seen a mummy. Uh, the mummy, the movie, the mummy, and, that, and that's Imhotep. And we said, no. This person looks like you and me. They have demonized. Right, right. Okay. So, this is what this curriculum is about. That's beautiful. Okay. And, and it, at times, contradicts what we have been taught. And once we hear the truth, it becomes unbelievable to our ears. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we know that the truth is in the lie. Mm -hmm. So, you have to go through the lie to find the truth. Because, as you just said, they only... Uh, go back so far to start the story when the story really started way, way, way beyond, way, right. way beyond that time, you know. And of course, we all know that we've been here since, you know, since the beginning. You know, I, I know yeah, how have. I feel about it. I, like, I, Adam and Eve was story, Adam though. and Eve was black. Yeah. You know, they struggle from the beginning, right. struggle from the beginning. You know, and I think that's know. a good piece of work. Oh man, that's excellent. That needs to be put out there and really jump on because some of the stuff you said I didn't even know. Yeah. You know, the sad part is that we fight that history. Right. You know, literally, when I ask groups of people, trace your ancestry all the way back to where you started, and they'll say uh, Missouri, mm -hmm. uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, fool, you wouldn't. Your ancestors didn't start out in no damn Chicago. But if that's all you know, I actually had a woman get mad at me. Uh, you don't tell me I ain't from no damn Africa. Okay. You go ahead and be from Alabama. <laughs> we, we know when you look at the origins of, of human beings and you look at the bone structure and you notice that uh, Europeans who come from the Caucasus Mountains, they have sharp noses, thin lips, and the sharp noses was due to the cold air. They, you know, they could not you know, filter that air with the nose being wide like Africans who come from that part of the, the continent where the nose is wide so they can filter. Mm -hmm. They can eat the fruit, you know, the vegetables, you know, uh, whereas the European did not have that comfort. That's why I told me that he, because he got a thin white man nose. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that's why he need to find his black man in America. Right. <laughs> but he got a mandingo body. Uh -oh. He got a mandingo body. Uh -oh. See how she likes to touch that. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you Google the first image of a European, mm. just Google that mm -hmm. and see what images you come up with. Wow. Okay. These are the images of the first, uh, images of the first European based on how they found these bones that were buried uh, deep into a cave. This just came out like two years ago. Okay. Uh, and they found out that these bones had a carbon dating of 35,000 years uh -huh. and a melanin content within the bone. That person looked like that image that you see. Mm -hmm. It had that much melanin in it. Mm. So the first European was African. Wow. That don't okay. surprise me. Don't that surprise you, me that don't surprise me. And, and, and we, we, we try to relate this to young people from the standpoint of what's going on with them now. Like when we look at sagging. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we take sagging and connect it with a uh, 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 lesson that deals with the, uh, the amendments. Okay. Okay. So this is how we test their reading, you know, based on trying to have something that relates to them. So we ask the question, where did sagging come from? Okay. And many of them say the prison systems, you know. But they have to go a little bit further back. And we use the example, we take a, a basketball, tie a rope around it, tie the two legs together, 
uh, with, with a rope and asked them, have you heard of the ball and chain that they used in enslavement, you know, to keep us from running? And we take a young man that's sagging and put them side by side and have them walk. And it looks the same way as if they're carrying a ball and chain mm -hmm. trying to walk. That's true. Okay. Trying to walk. So what's going on with that, we ask. Okay. Uh, um, so I have that in here. A couple, uh, last year, the American Medical Association, the American Medical Association did a piece on the medical implications of sagging. Mm -hmm. And what they found out was that uh, a six or seven year period of sagging would cause the gait to be uh, dysfunctional because you're, you're not walking correctly. Oh, okay, okay. You're not putting left to right. What does that cause? It causes ED, erectile dysfunction. Mm. Uh, okay. Put your, your pants up, Toby. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, you know. what they found out was that young men between the ages of 19 and 23 were buying a lot of Viagra wow. and a lot of uh, uh, generic. Hey, uh, do y'all hear this? Y'all hear this? 23-year-olds. Okay. You know, with and erection pound dysfunction. And, and, and they found out oh, that... Oh, y'all lose y'all friends. Half your age. Plus seven. I just remember we... I'm in my prime. <laughs> 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 but that's real. But, but you know, what they found out was that the young men were not telling their boys about what they have to do. Because it's right. like a taboo right. mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. But the long-term implications is you're not going to be able to procreate. It's a form of genocide. Oh, I can't wait to tell my students oh, man. tomorrow. You, now you that, tell them oh, oh I can't wait. They're they about to get some of this. Because I never heard of the medical implications. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, now that'll make them think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they going to hear about yeah. this at school tomorrow. You might get a few more and pull them up their pants. But, but, you, but, but look that up. Just Google sagging and medical implications. Okay. So, now, is there a time frame that this happens? Like if they sag for three, four... Seven years, he just said. Seven, seven years. Seven years, years if they sag. Continuous. Continuous Continuously sag. Continuously for seven years, there's a 50% chance. chance. Yeah. What kind of percentage are we talking chance? Uh, they didn't say what's chance. Matter of fact, a couple of rap artists have taken on, have taken on the, the, uh, the mission because it happened to one rap artist. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And he's rapping about it, trying to inform the you know, right. man of what's going on. But what better way to create genocide yeah. than to put right. to you, this is a hip thing to do. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, this is a culturistic thing to do. And we're going to get your other peers that you look at to sag too. Right. Because so we're going to kill all y'all. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to kill all y'all. Yeah. And then we're going to make these pills and make this money off of you before we kill you. Right. And the side effects from the pills is what's killing us. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they they've been dirty from the beginning. I keep telling y'all, but <laughs> <laughs> they dirty from the top. But but, but, but even when you look wow. at, we we relate that to mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. Okay, based on the Thirteenth Amendment. So we have them read the Thirteenth Amendment that says slavery is back in effect once you are arrested and convicted of a crime. It says it very specifically that you that slavery is back in effect. Oh, the 13th Amendment. Oh, on the 13th Let's Amendment. Let's see, we learning stuff today. Okay. We are learning it. So, uh, in the 13th Amendment, we have them read it. Okay. Don't take our words for it. Read it. Read the 13th Amendment. We even Amendment. have the information about sagging. Please read this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we know they are thinking, especially the young men that have, uh, you know, the dreads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can tell when young people are thinking, they start twisting their head. Right. <laughs> like, right. And they say, man, I didn't think, of, think about this. I wasn't aware of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at least we got them thinking, not knowing yeah. if they're going to correct their right. behavior. Right, right. But we, we got but them But at least thinking. they got some type of understanding of what the uh, detriment right. of the whole situation what is can, about. Uh, what can parents do? They can become informed. Right, they can inform, mm -hmm. get informed, and inform their kids. You, you know, the thing about uh, our website is that it's a username and password for students that we want them to go home. We want the parents to start reading to help their children, you know, in, in these subject matters where they can become empowered, you know, uh, by understanding a different way uh, of, of understanding themselves and how they can help uh, their children. Wow. That's, but, a, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You, you know, in the, 
I don't want to hog the time. Oh, no, no, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you mean. You don't want to hog the time. What kind of man is this? <laughs>